Welcome all. We'll uh, wait just a couple more minutes. We had quite a few people register, so we, we are waiting for more users to join. Thank you for your patience. Okay, let's get started. Thank you all for joining me today for this webinar about peak analysis with Origin Pro. My name is Ishwar Iyer, product manager at Origin Lab. So I have put together an Origin project with an outline for today's webinar, and we will share this with you after the webinar is done and we are also recording the webinar and we'll share the recording as well so before we start with the webinar let me show a few things on our website so our website is originlab.com <coughs> excuse me so over here if you click on the support menu and then click help center this is our main support page Again, it's under support menu and help center. You may want to bookmark this page. There are quite a few useful technical resources here, such as video tutorials, our technical blog, searchable FAQs, origin forum, case studies, etc. And there's also uh, an icon here for webinars. So if you click on that, you will see upcoming webinars. So we have a, a few webinars coming up. If you haven't registered, you may want to go ahead and do so. There is one next Friday about what's new in the latest version, and the following two Fridays are on basic statistics and curve fitting. And on this main webinar page, there is also a button for rec all recorded webinars. <coughs> Excuse me. If you click on that, you will see all the past webinars listed here. So for each past webinar, you can download the project file and you can either play the recording or download the recording or also watch the recording on YouTube. So next week when we put up this particular webinar, you will find it on this page. OK, so this is where you need to go to get the project file and the recording. OK, then back to the support page. Let me just show our release history. You may already know that Origin is released uh, two, two versions a year, one around April and one around October. So we just released Origin 2023B. That's the latest version. So on the main uh, web page, originlab.com, you'll see an icon here for 2023B. If you click on that, you will see highlights page with all the key features. Okay, 
And over here, you can browse and see all the past versions as well. What were the key features added there? Okay. So just wanted to point out some of these um, web pages. Also want to show you under the products page, if you click on Origin or Origin Pro, you'll get to the main product page with an outline of all the features. So if you click on peak analysis, for example, there is some summary here of peak analysis, and there is a more detailed page on all of the peak analysis features. So this is something you may want to browse too. Keep in mind that we have two products. We have Origin and Origin Professional Pro. <coughs> Several of the peak analysis features are available only in Pro. Similarly, advanced curve fitting, advanced statistics, advanced signal processing, etc., are also available only in Pro. If you want to see what, what are the dif di differences between Origin and Origin Pro, if you click on the products menu, there is an Origin versus Pro table where you can compare for each area, such as peak analysis, statistics, etc., what is additionally available in Pro. Okay. All right, let's get back to origin and start with our uh, peak analysis uh, webinar topics. During the webinar, if you have questions, feel free to um, post in the chat window or the Q&A window. My colleague Yiming Chen from Tech Support has joined as well. He will be monitoring the chat as well. Feel free to ask questions, okay? All right, so before we get into analysis, of peak data, I would like to start with some basic graphing, <laughs> different type of templates, how to explore data, etc. before we get into finding and fitting peaks. Okay, so here I have a worksheet with one X column and multiple Y columns, some measurement of uh, excitation um, intensities as a function of emission wavelength. Um, and what I would like to do to begin with is simply just select one column, okay, and then go to the plot menu and under basic 2D, as you may already know, our plot menu is organized by category. There are many different categories. So let's start with some simple plots under basic 2D. So I'll make a line plot. So what origin does when you select a column and ask for a plot is that columns are plot designations. So by default, the worksheet is set up as X, Y, Y, Y. So if I choose a Y column, create a plot, Origin will look to the left to find an X column, and then it'll automatically use that X column for my X axis. If it doesn't find an X column, it'll keep going to the left, and if it doesn't find any, then it'll just use the row numbers. So in this case, you can see Origin automatically picked up column A as X. I have plotted, plotted column B here, and you can also see uh, long name units, et cetera, were picked up from the header area of the worksheet and were used to annotate the graph nicely. Okay, now that we have seen a basic graph, let's go back and see how to plot all of this data. So if I drag and select all the columns and go to the plot menu, and you can see recently used plots will show up here, so you can quickly access what you had just, the template that you have used recently for plotting. So let me click on line again. So this time it's plotting all of the data, all, all four columns, just overlapped on top of each other. Okay, and then you can see here, the legend is showing uh, which curve corresponds to which excitation wavelength in this case, which is the input parameter. Then I can interact with the plot in recent versions of Origin, we have added this mini toolbar for uh, things such as adjusting um, line styles, changing um, format of the layer, if you want to add a fill color, etc. Everything is point and click accessible in recent versions. You don't have to hunt around for toolbars which are docked around the interface. Based on where you click, you get a context sensitive mini toolbar that pops up. Okay, so this graph may be useful in comparing multiple curves. So let's go back and see what other plot types we can do with this data. Again, feel free to ask questions. You can use the chat window or Q&A window. Let's select all four columns again. 
And this time around, let me go to the plot menu and under basic 2D, I'll use this template called stacked lines by Y offset. So it's the same data now plotted, but each curve has been given an offset. So rather than overlapping on top of each other as in this graph, now you have a better view of your data separated in Y by arbitrary offsets, okay? Just another plot type. So it depends on what type of <coughs> plot may be suitable for performing exploration or analysis, um, depending on your context, you can choose different templates. Okay, moving on, let's take the same data set again and select all the columns. And this time under the plot menu, I'll go to multi-panel, multi-axis plots. There are several choices here, such as double Y, et cetera. What I want to show with this particular data set is a stack plot. So if I click on the stack plot, a dialog opens with a preview. And in this preview, it's already showing me how it's plotting the four data sets. So now it's taking the four data sets and stacking them up one on top of the other as four separate layers, okay? Here you have many choices, such as do you want landscape mode or portrait mode? Do you want a single y-axis title or a combined y-axis title, which makes more sense in this case because they're all the same quantity, intensity, uh, at different um, excitation uh, wavelengths. There are other options here for arranging um, plot assignments and spacing, et cetera, that you can play with, okay? So let me go ahead and simply click OK. And now I get the same data in a different configuration. So note that in the previous configurations, the graph had just a single layer. You can see that in the object manager. Object manager is a, a dockable window that's on the right side of the interface. It was introduced several versions ago. So you can see the hierarchy of the graph here, that the graph page has one layer. Under the layer, there's one group, and the group has four entries here. If I double click, you will see the same thing in the plot details dialog the graph level, the layer level, and four entries, four data plots. What we did with the stack plot though, is we made a plot with four layers stacked on top of each other. So now you can see there are four layers here, and each layer has only a single data plot, okay? Now let's look at some other data, and this time around, I have many, many columns of data. So this is an excitation emission map here is the excitation wavelength, and there are several wavelengths. And here is the emission wavelength, and these are all the um, amplitudes. So with this sort of data, you can also turn on spark lines in origin. You may already know spark line is a feature where every column is represented by a small graph that is shown on top of the column. So they, you can visualize the data without even plotting it. So here they are, the spark lines. So I can simply scroll the worksheet just to see how my uh, spectra are evolving as a function of the uh, excitation wavelength, okay? Now, let's take this data and plot it. Actually, I missed a folder, I apologize. It's the same data. Let me first show you a waterfall plot. So here, the format is set as X multiple Y. So if I click on the top left here, I can select the entire worksheet. And once I do that, I can go to the plot menu. And under the 3D category, there are several options for waterfall. Let's look at the plain black and white waterfall. So now it's plotting the excitation wavelength along the Z, the emission wavelength along the X, and the amplitude is along the Y here. And these are all OpenGL 3D plots. They are fast responding. You can rotate, you can skew, you can um, change the aspect ratio, all of that, okay? If I choose the same data, there are a few other options, such as if I go here, I can do a 3D Y color waterfall. So in this case, what it's doing is it's giving a color to the curve based on the Y value. So you can see here that the bottom um, values close to zero are red and the higher values are blue. You can choose any different color map here uh, for this plot to customize further, okay? 
the same data let's choose now and go to the plot menu and look at contour plots so i can plot this data as a contour color fill <laughs> so origin then opens a dialog called the virtual metrics dialog so it's asking me to define the data it's asking where's my x data where's my y data <laughs> so in this case i have x across columns okay and the x values are in a column label and the column is the excitation uh, wavelength column here as you know the header area of the origin worksheet can have any number of header rows in this case i have a custom row called excitation with the values my y values are in the first column of the selection so once i have set all that i can click ok and origin will take that data in the worksheet treat it as a matrix and then plot it as a contour plot okay and the same data i could also plot under the contour plot as a uh, a contour profile or, or an image profile <laughs> so if i choose contour profile and accept the defaults now i get the same contour plot but this time around i can uh, choose these vertical and horizontal lines and move them around in order to get cross sections from my data okay and you can add more than one um, of horizontal or vertical lines to do things like comparing two different projections etc okay same data let's go to the plot menu this time and under 3d let's choose 3d color map surface again the virtual metrics dialog pops up i'm using the same settings so now i have a 3d plot okay of the data all right okay moving on one more plot type i would like to show is called the browser graph this was <laughs> introduced in some of the recent versions um, let me see in the chat window there are questions. Okay, my colleague is helping to answer. Okay, great. Um, okay, uh, here I have uh, again some spectra where I have two different parameters. One parameter is some ratio of uh, material that was used in the sample. Okay, and uh, this is some diffraction data. And then another um, parameter here is the temperature of the measurement for the sample so let's see how to um, work with this data so if i take this data and go to the plot menu there is a category called browser okay so if i go to the browser category there are several options here recently we added the stack lines option so let me choose that <coughs> excuse me so now what happens is origin just picked up one of the columns and plotted them but you can see on the left there's a navigation panel and it by default picked up the short name we can right click there and say show me the long name so that shows the material percentage then i can right click again and say show me the comments which has the temperature and i can right click and say hide the short name <coughs> excuse me so now on the left panel i have all of my pertinent metadata listed so now i can do things like i can hold the shift key and click here to select all of the curves which are at 0.2 percent and then it's showing me what how the curve looks like at 400 800 and 1200 okay alternately i could click here to sort so I'm now sorting by temperature. Then, then I can click and select all of the 400s. Then it's showing me a temperature 400, how the data is evolving as a function of the material um, co composition here. So in other words, this panel lets you flexibly sort and select data. So you can plot just the data that you want to compare. Okay, also, if you wish to even make a video, there are options here, such as <coughs> flip through option, excuse me. So in the flip through, you can drag um, the slider to see how the data is evolving. You can also export it, uh, and then a dialog comes up. You can specify uh, where to export, and it will export as an AVI movie. So you might want to check out this browser plot. It's a 
fairly recent addition and origin. OK, so I hope with this section, I conveyed a flavor of what could be done with peak data in terms of simply plotting an origin. There are so many different templates available. OK, let's now move on to some data exploration techniques. OK, again, questions, comments, please feel free to use the chat window or QA window. <coughs> OK, here I have some pulse data. And what if I just want to read some values? OK, so there are several ways to do that in origin. When a graph is active in origin, on the left side, there is a tools toolbar with many different buttons available here. For example, I have a scale in button I can use to zoom in. And on the right side here, there is a rescale, which will bring it back to the full data range. OK, beneath here, I have other options. And here is a screen reader. The screen reader will simply read values on the screen, it's not necessarily reading data. Just wherever you click on the screen, you will get the X and Y coordinates. OK, let's click here and the, in the next button here and choose data reader. With data reader now, you can lock onto a data point. So it's actually the cursor is locked to that data point. You can see if I use the left and right arrow keys, I can thumb through my data. And the data info window here is showing me the time value and the voltage value. OK, uh, it's also shown in this uh, little window here as well. OK. Now, what if I want to find some uh, differences between the peaks? OK, so in the same um, toolbar that I clicked, you can see some of the toolbars have a little triangle on the right side. If I click on it, I get multiple options. So one option is a data cursor. So I can bring up a data cursor. I can double click and place it here. OK. So I have a data cursor placed on that peak. Then I can click the data cursor button again, and let's go over to this peak and double click and place. So I have two data cursors placed there, okay? So now let's see how I can read values between them. So in this data info window, by default, it shows only one value, the X and the Y. But I can right click here and choose preferences. And if I choose preferences, then I can add another column. OK, so one is showing data reader. The other is also by default data reader, but I can click edit and say show cursor one minus cursor two or rather cursor two minus cursor one. There are other options you can use uh, to customize, etc. So now if I click OK, you can see that it's showing me the relative difference in time between these two peaks, between these two cursor points. So Relative difference is 60. The relative voltage difference is 0.054. So it's essentially delta X and delta Y. So if I drag here, you'll see now it's 20. Now it's minus 0.125. So this is a useful tool for doing some quick measurements, finding um, differences in peak heights and differences in X, etc. OK. I tend to speak fast if you have questions or if anything is not clear and need to show again, let me know in the chat window. OK, let's look at annotation now. <clears throat> I'm again using the same um, um, uh, data here. So just wanted to show you that there is an annotation um, button here. So if I click on the annotation button and and walk over to the graph, I can click and choose a particular point and hit enter, and I'll get the X and Y values annotated. Okay, wherever you click or double click. Okay. And then you can further customize, you can go uh, change, change the font, rotation, etc. Okay. Um, placement of the labels, all of that can be customized. And it uses some syntax as well. Del um, X, Y, etc. Those could be customized as well. <laughs> okay, all that is documented. You can look it up. Okay. All right. Also, in recent version, we added a distance annotation tool. So let me find that. So with the graph active, if I go to the annotation here, there is a angle annotation and a distance annotation. With the distance annotation, I can click and drag. It doesn't necessarily lock to the data points, but I can drag and add an arrow like this. 
And if I double click here again, you can see it's saying uh, V comma two, but I can go here and say DX comma two, then it will show you, uh, I forget the syntax. X comma two, Y comma two. So these could be customized as well. So I can add here dollar parenthesis y comma point two. Point two is just how many decimal places to show. So you could customize uh, the labels as well. Again, this is all documented in case you are interested in using the uh, data annotation, uh, the distance annotation tool. Okay. Moving on, let's look at one more tool before we get into analysis. So here I have the same data that we saw before plotted on the left as a Y offset plot and plotted on the right as a um, layer, a stack layer plot. Okay. And what I would <coughs> want to do is to read values from multiple curves. So when a graph is active, we have a gadgets menu available. So if I go to the gadgets menu, we have a gadget called vertical cursor. If I bring that on, I can move this, move it along and you can see it's reading all the Y values. Okay, and there is an associated dialog here. I can do things like tagging the peaks. If I want to leave the markers there, I can come over here and tag it again. And all the tag values can be um, saved into a worksheet, etc. Many, many options. Um, urge you to check out that tool if you're interested. The same thing, works in a, um, a stacked layer as well. So if I go here and choose a vertical cursor, I'll get a cursor across uh, all of the layers. And again, it's doing the same thing that we saw before. Here too, I can tag, etc. okay? <laughs> now, one thing I forgot to mention, when layers are stacked like this, by default, they're all linked together. So if I hold the Z key and zoom, they all zoom together. If I hold the X key and I'm using my mouse wheel. If I use the X key and use the mouse wheel, I can pan. If I use the zoom, if I hold the Z key and use my mouse wheel, I can zoom. The same thing works with um, Y offset plot as well. Zoom and pan. So Z, hold the Z key and use the mouse wheel to zoom. Hold the X key down and use the mouse wheel to pan. Okay. All right. <laughs> so so far we have seen various plot options for peak data and some tools for exploring data. Now let's move on to analyzing the data. Okay, <clears throat> so first I would like to just find all peaks in my data set. Okay, so with this graph active, uh, rather than tagging one at a time, I want to find them all. So let's go to the gadgets menu and there is a gadget called quick peaks. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. So when I choose that gadget, a dialog opens. And if I accept all the dialog uh, defaults and click OK, it gives me a region of interest rectangle here. So the idea is I can move this around to choose even a subset of my data, or I could drag and stretch across all of my data. So you can see it already found all the six peaks here in this data, and it's uh, showing me the X value where the peaks are located. Anytime you want to change settings, you can click on this little triangle button and you can choose preferences. <laughs> and there are many options here, how to define baseline. So for example, the def default is second derivative, but obviously here no baseline is needed. So I can change it to a zero baseline. Then I can go to find peaks and I can tweak the settings. In this case, I don't need to do anything. Everything looks pretty good. So I can click here and say, go ahead and give me new output for the entire curve, okay? Then it'll give me a table of values. If I click here, I can go to the report worksheet. Sometimes the report worksheet goes hidden behind the um, graph. So here you can see nicely, it's showing me the peak ID, the peak row number, the peak X value, which happens to be the same here, the peak Y value, the height, the area, full width and half max, et cetera, okay? And then I can close the gadget and then I'm done with my analysis and the tags remain on the graph. Okay, so that's a simple way of finding and tagging peaks. Okay, let's move on and do peak integration. And I'll show you a couple of examples. First, let's start with a simple example. I have a single curve here with some sort of baseline. Uh, we'll later see how to correct baseline. 
So right now, I just want to find rough areas under this peak one and peak two. So with the graph active again, we'll go to gadgets, choose quick peaks. Okay, and just let's click OK and bring up the uh, region of interest. So as you can see, I can adjust it to get a good baseline. Uh, so that baseline looks pretty good. I see my um, area marked here as a fill color. Then I can do the same similar thing here to the second peak, and that looks good too. If any settings need to be changed, you can reopen and change it. So now that everything looks good, I can position my um, ROI on each peak, and I can click here and say new output, and it will create output for just that peak. See, peak one, and it's showing me the parameters for peak one. Now I can move my um, ROI to the second peak and go ahead and say new output. So it will append to the same report, the second peak, okay? What's the peak um, X and Y and area, et cetera. Then I can close my gadget, okay? So this way you can interactively work on a spectrum and get all the desired areas nicely tabulated. One note in previous versions, um, the quick peaks gadget will keep putting the results to the same book unless you rename the book. We improved that in the latest version so that for each folder, a new report book is created. Okay. Now let's look at a more complex example. And this example is from a case study that a user uh, provided. Let me quickly show you. There is an area of the website where we showcase case studies, <laughs> where we have case studies from users like you from many different fields, how they are using origin, what was the key benefit of using origin for that particular story, et cetera. So here's a story from Dr. Jay Diner, who is uh, a professor at uh, City University of New York, who was teaching students uh, basic chemistry class. And um, this is a particular data set that they collected. It's essentially an infrared spectroscopy of mixture of trans fats and non-trans fats. And then we wish to, um, at, at different proportions. So here's in the in the in the comments, you see zero weight, two point five, ten weight, fifteen weight, twenty weight, etc. Different uh, uh, proportions of trans fat mixed into the sample. So in this case, the peak of interest is in wavelength nine forty to thousand. So in this graph, first I can zoom in. I can you know, go go here to the toolbar and drag and select a particular region. So this is the region I want. I can zoom in further okay <clears throat> you can also note that you can also the, use the z key and the x key like i showed before you can pan and you can hold the z key and zoom so this looks pretty good roughly 940 to 1000 our area of um, re range of interest so now i can go ahead and choose my quick picks gadget again and then click ok and i can see that it's detecting the peak so now all these data are overlapping. So I want to make sure it's working well with the other curves as well. So in this flyout, I can say change data to 15 weight, change data to 10 weight. So you can see, <coughs> excuse me, it's doing a pretty good job of uh, finding a good baseline and an area. Everything looks good. Then I can click here and say new output for all curves. Okay, so that's important because these are multiple curves in the same layer. So I have to choose new output for all curves. And if I do that, <coughs> excuse me, it will give me a worksheet. Now everything is nicely tabulated. You can see the data set identifier for zero weight, what was the peak area, for 2.5 weight, what for the peak, peak area, etc. So for example, I could set this as my X, set as X, and I could uh, set these other X. Okay, let me just change them to set as Y. So if I take the peak area and here's my X, I can, for example, make a column plot. So now it's showing me how the peak area is changing as a function of the trans fat weight in my sample. Okay, then I could do further things like linear regression to this to build a model, etc. You can read about that in the case study, what they did in that class. <laughs> Let me pause a moment and take a look at uh, uh, chat and Q&A here. Uh, I see my colleague is answering the chats. Thank you, Yemeng. 
please uh, continue posting questions there. We love to hear from you. Um, this webinar is for you, so we want to answer your questions. Okay. Also, one thing I missed to mention on the website, on that support page that I showed you earlier, Support Help Center, on the top right, there is submit a support ticket. That's the way for you to contact tech support. So if you later have a question about any of the features that we demoed in this webinar, or uh, how to use a particular feature with your specific data, feel free to send a ticket. In the ticket, you can say, hey, I attended this peak analysis webinar. Here's my data. Things are not working exactly well for me. Help me, and we'll um, provide you with uh, technical help. So feel free to submit tickets. <clears throat> okay, now let's move on. Uh, we looked at t uh, finding and tagging peaks. We looked at peak integration. Now I would like to fo focus on peak fitting or peak deconvolution. So first let's do a simple example. So here it is assumed that there is no baseline correction or baseline has already been corrected. It's also assumed that you as the user know roughly where the peaks are. So in this case, I know uh, obviously, there are two peaks here, and I know there is also a shoulder here. There is a third peak here. So how to fit this data quickly? So with the graph active, I can go to the analysis menu now. Remember, last time we used the gadgets quick peaks. There are several other gadgets here, integrate, interpolate, etc. just so you know. <laughs> now under analysis, uh, as you may already know, we have many different categories for analysis. And uh, under fitting, there are several options. Uh, but there is a peak and baseline uh, menu as well with multiple flyouts. Let's look at the first one, multiple peak fit, and then let me open the dialog. Okay, so a dialog comes up and it's asking me what um, function to use. As you know, Origin ships with many uh, fitting functions uh, which are categorized and peak functions, we have several that are shipped with the product. You can add your own. We also put up functions on the website for you to download. And if there is a particular <coughs> peak function line shape that you would like to see in origin, you can always contact us with that ticket system I mentioned, and we would be happy to look into adding that. So let's stay with Gauss and click OK. And then now origin is saying, hey, go ahead and double click and tell me where the peaks are. So I'm just going to double click here to add one. Add two, add three. Okay. At this point, I can simply click fit, <coughs> and Origin will perform a fit to that data. And you can see that it created a table here. You can see the individual um, uh, curves here. Let me let me make them thicker. So you can see uh, there is a cumulative curve and the individual individual curves. And then there is a log here. Typically, when Origin does an analysis, the output is logged to the input. The output um, went the output details went to the same book that had the data. So here is a very detailed report uh, with all the statistics, etc. And I can always click on this log to change parameters. In which case, the nonlinear fitter dialog opens, and if I want to make any change, such as change the function, etc., I can go ahead and do that. We have several videos on curve fitting and how to do change parameters, etc., that you may want to explore. Okay. So that's a simple uh, case of peak de deconvolution. Now let's look at a more complex tool called the peak analyzer. Okay, and I'll show two examples with that. The first one is integration again with baseline correction. We want to fix the baseline, subtract the baseline, and then integrate. So with this <coughs> graph active, let's go to the analysis menu. Let's go to peaks and baseline, and this time I'll choose peak analyzer and then I'll open the dialog. And the peak analyzer is a wizard. It walks through uh, basically step by step to achieve a particular goal. And there are multiple goals available here. One is to integrate, another is simply to create a baseline or subtract, another is to find peak, and the last one is to fit peaks. So let's do peak integration. And if I click next, then I need to find a baseline. Obviously, constant wouldn't work. I can do user defined and origin will try to find some uh, points which are away from the peaks. Uh, that looks pretty good. So I can go next and I can then say, um, in, do interpolation, do a spline connection. 
B spline, etc. Maybe I need to add more data points so I can come back here and I can say disable auto find and go ahead and add. So this way I can customize and I can say where the point should be. I can double click and I can choose sort of define guide origin, help origin by defining the baseline. So then if I go next, things may work better. OK, now I want to show that there are other methods too. So rather than user defined, you can choose XPS baseline, you can choose endpoint, straight line. There is also an asymmetric least square smoothing technique. So if I choose that and click next, there are a few parameters to tweak, one of them being the smoothing parameter. So if we increase the smoothing parameter, that looks like a pretty good baseline. So without having to click angle points, I could define the baseline this way using the ALS method. Okay. You can write your own code as well. And by the way, Origin now has script uh, language, which has been around forever. And we also have um, embedded Python for coding. So now on this page, it's about what to do with the baseline. I'm going to say auto subtract the baseline and auto rescale and click OK. Now the baseline has been subtracted. So clearly there are two peaks. Maybe there's some noise around here. So now the next objective is to find the peaks. So there are many options here, like find only positive peaks, use local maximum, use second derivative. We'll see a bit of this later. This looks pretty good. That's the two peaks I wanted. I click next and origin places these uh, regions on the graph for integration. I can leave them as auto or I can adjust each one individually uh, to my desired X range. So for example, here it's going a little bit over uh, we use the zero baseline, so that looks good to me. So then I can click finish and note that there are many, many uh, quantities here, left half width, right half width, peak centroid. You can choose what you want and click finish and it will then generate a report, okay, with the desired values. Now with the same peak analyzer tool, let's look at how to do peak deconvolution. So I have two data sets here. Let me click on the first one here and I go to that tool again, peak analyzer, open it, it picked up that particular curve. This time I want to do fit peaks and I don't need a baseline. So I can say Y equal to zero, click next and then find peaks. So origin will try to find peaks. So here you may have to do some tweaking. I can say find positive peaks. Okay, you can show the second derivative. So you can see the second derivative is rather noisy. So then I can say, go ahead and smooth the uh, second derivative, okay? So let me choose the method here to second derivative method, and I can choose the smoothing. Let me just do adjacent averaging, and now try to find. So you see that it took the second derivative and smoothed it. There is that red curve, which is a smooth curve. Then it's looking for inflections in the second derivative to find the peak. So here's one inflection point, one minima, that's one peak, another one here, that's the second peak, and third one here, that's the third peak. That looks pretty good. So then we can click OK, and then origin will place uh, uh, the guess values. It's not yet the fitted values, just guess values for the Gaussian uh, peaks. Let me stretch this a bit so you can see better. So at this point, I can simply click fit and then origin will perform the fitting. You can see that there are the individual peaks and there is an overall curve. I can also click fit control and just wanted to let you know there are many things you can do here, like fixing a parameter, placing bounds on your parameters, fit control, many, many options. You can look at the documentation and tutorials to learn more about how to use them. Then I can click finish and then I'll get a nice report here. Okay, so the report then um, shows the details of the peaks and the area under the curve, etc. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I can click change parameters to bring it back up. Then it brings it back up with the exact same settings I left it at. Um, you can notice all the settings that we used. Once you have a favorite set of settings, you can go here and say save them. You can say save as, and you can call my three peak, for example. There are many different options here, what to save, what not to save in that theme. Okay, I'll choose the defaults and click OK. Once I have a, my settings captured, I can go to another data set another day 
and then I can say analysis, peaks and baseline, peak analyzer, and there is my theme that I just saved. If I click here, it'll immediately do the fit. But if I hold the shift key and click, it'll open the peak analyzer with that setting loaded. So now here is the new data with that theme loaded. So if I click next, uh, you can see all of our settings, right? So, so again, I have to click find here to shift the peaks. And here I may have to do some tweaking. Um, the by height or adjust an averaging probably did not work well. So let me reduce it to 15 or try some different um, settings here. Let's see, click find. By number, number of peaks three, click find. So you'll have to do some adjusting with these parameters to find the peak locations for the second data, okay? Um, I'll leave that as an exercise to you due to lack of time. You can play with these kind of settings and then you can click finish and perform the same uh, fitting to the second data set and get a similar report, okay? So the idea is you don't have to start from scratch. You can save settings and then for the next data, the settings may work automatically or you may do need to do a few tweaking of this uh, different parameters in the settings to adjust for your new data, okay? Okay. Okay, somebody's asking when using peak analyzer, how to indicate the number of decimal number of peak positions during peak fitting. Um, so the question, uh, the, the issue there is, I think by default it follows under preferences options, there is a numeric format tab and the number of digits is by default five. You can try changing that to a lower digit, okay? Also in a report, you can go ahead and change things here as well. So if I have a report, I believe if I click here, I can do digits and I can change the digits here from default decimal. Um, um, so it's telling me where I have to change. So I need to change in the dialogue itself. So there are several options. Um, you could probably Google and find the help file. Uh, and if you still run into trouble, send us a ticket and we'll help you. Okay, a couple of last things to show here. Um, so here I have another data set and I want to perform again the peak deconvolution, but this time around I want to use a different tool. So what I want to use is an app. So you may or may not be familiar with apps. Now, apps were introduced way back in version 2016. <laughs> so apps are add-on tools that we provide for free for Origin, and you can download them from our website. And in the Origin interface on the right side, there is an apps bar. You can pin it or you can hide it. And if it's not visible, you can go to the view menu and turn it on. <laughs> so the idea here is you click on add apps and an app center opens. Then you can browse here and try to find apps that may be applicable to you. So for example, I can type in peak. You can type in keywords here and do a search. Then it will show me all the apps that are related to peak analysis. <laughs> here is one on cyclic voltometry. Here is one for pulse fit. This was requested by a user who had thousands of pulses in a data set and wanted to perform a quick fit. So anytime you see an app like this, there is a button next to it to click to download and install. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you have already installed, it will show a green check mark. Okay. So you might want to explore and find apps that um, may be of interest to you. There's a global peak fit app. There's a peak resolution enhancement app. There's a Fourier self deconvolution app. Many options for peak analysis. So I have already installed a peak deconvolution app. So let's take a look at that one. <clears throat> so prior to doing that, let's first make a graph. So let me select all of these columns and I'll go to the plot menu. And under basic 2D, I'll choose stacked line by Y offset. Okay, let me make the line a bit thicker. Okay, <clears throat> so as you can see, I have a, sp a spectra here with two peaks and it's a function of temperature here. As the temperature increases, the peaks are drifting and also broadening. So I want to quantify that for all of, for this collection of data sets. So over here, let me find the peak deconvolution app. Okay, you can list the apps 
by sort them by newest installer alphabetical. So here's the peak deconvolution app. If I click on it, <laughs> it's going to bring up a nice dialogue. And the functionality here is similar to the peak analyzer that we saw before, but this is somewhat nicer if you ask me. It's a more modern dialogue with all the controls in one panel here, so not a wizard. So you don't have to keep going back and forth. Um, so everything is right here. So let's go ahead and do, do a few things. I can uh, do a constant minimum baseline, which looks good. For the peaks, I can click on the peak finding settings and I can say, okay, find only positive peaks. Use a local maximum with say 15 points on the window and click find. Okay, it found the two peaks. Then I can say, don't find any more peaks, only find two. So I can restrict it by number and I can say find only two peaks. Okay, just to customize my settings. <coughs> so now that the peaks have been found, there are several options here. You can do one iteration at a time. You can click till everything is iterated and converts. So everything looks good. It will tell you the chi-squared. Things look good. For one, one data set out of the many from here, uh, I have a good um, setup with all my settings here for the baseline peaks. By the way, I can also save and load settings if I desire uh, for future use. Now, what we have done in this app is we have added a button here for batch peak fitting. So the idea here is if we have, start with a graph with multiple data sets, this tool will pick up one data set. You tweak all the settings to get the right settings for that particular set of data. Then you simply click this button and it will perform a batch analysis of all of the data in that graph and then give you a nice table. Okay. Okay. So now you can see, if I move the graph to the side. So here's my uh, analysis for each each of the um, data sets here, I found two peaks were found, right? And here's the peak type, area, <laughs> center max, center of gravity, um, max height, full width, half max, et cetera. So easy interactive way for performing batch peak analysis without writing a single line of code, okay? All right, the last thing I wanted to show is surface um, fitting. So not only you can fit uh, spectra, you can also fit um, 2D spectra. So in this case I, have, uh, case, I have a matrix with some excitation emission map, and I have some um, peaks here, as you can see. I can go back to this matrix and plot this as a 3D uh, surface for you to see better. So you can see here, if I hold the R key and rotate, there are four distinct peaks in the surface. I have plotted it as a contour plot just to uh, have it in a simpler format for the fitting. So with this graph active, let's go to the analysis menu and under fitting now, you will see there is a nonlinear surface fit. Okay. Some of these I failed to mention before. Some of these features that I showed today are available only in Pro. So for example, the peak analyzer is available only in Pro. The peak deconvolution app is available only for Pro. The way apps work is they are free uh, but some apps are only available for Pro, others are available also for Origin. So this particular tool, again, the nonlinear surface fit is available only in the Pro version of Origin. So I bring up the tool. First, I have to choose a function. Again, there are many uh, 2D uh, fitting functions. So Origin is finding one peak by default. Then I go to the advanced settings here. Then I can say I need to add more peaks, add three more. So it found four, but one of them it found in the valley here. So I can go here and say, don't look for peaks in both directions, look only in the positive direction. So now it found all four peaks, as you can see. Then I can perform my iterations, okay? And then get a nice fit. You can go to the messages and see that uh, iterations were performed and um, uh, the fit conversion and I get a nice COD. Okay, then I can click OK, and then now you can see that Origin would uh, create another matrix uh, with all of the uh, uh, fit matrix uh, data, and here's my table of values, and here you can see are the fit lines on that particular data. Okay, 
All right, that brings me to the end of this webinar. So to recap, we looked at many different options for graphing peak data. We looked at various tools for exploring peak data. And then we looked at ways to tag peaks, find and tag peaks, peak integration, peak fitting, more advanced peak analysis using the peak analyzer and the peak deconvolution app and surface fitting. We will share this project with you. Again, to find the project, you just need to head over to originlab.com. You will, you will get the project and the recording early next week. Once we clean it up, we'll put it up. Uh, at, if you go to originlab.com, go to support and go to help center. Or here itself, you can see there is a webinar button. If you click the webinar button, you'll get to the webinar page. As I mentioned before, there are some upcoming webinars you can register for. And here is a button for all the recorded webinars. So the webinar, today's webinar will show up on top of this list early next week. Okay. Any questions, comments you have on the webinar, please let us know. I'll leave it open for you to continue typing in the chat window or the QA window. Thank you for your time. Thank you for attending and hope to see you soon um, for another webinar. Have a nice rest of the day.